So hi everyone, this is Iyad Murtada and I would like to welcome you all here today on behalf of Open Thinking Academy. Open Thinking Academy is an online training company offering many online training programs which can help you improve your thinking process and allow you to take your problem solving and decision making skills to the next level. As for me, I have been teaching finance and accounting for many years including CIA and CMA review courses and I'm excited to have here more than 130 students uh, studying CIA with me worldwide. Our topic today is going to be about the roles that internal auditors are playing in their organizations. So let's start before going in and understanding the internal audit and what they do. What is the main purpose of having an internal audit in your organization? Well, the first thing, the internal audit will try to help the organization in doing what? First, in making sure that all the controls are working, making sure that they, they have the, uh, a very good risk management plan and at the same time, helping the organization in improving their operation, in going to the next level, in doing quality control, in doing anything that would be able to make them to cut costs or increase their profit. So in, in one way or another, it will help the organization in achieving their objectives. So this is the definition of internal auditing based on the Internal Institute of Internal Auditors. We are saying the internal auditing is an independent objective. See, so first the internal audit is an independent. It's right that maybe they are inside the organization or outside the organization, but they should be independent from the management who is running the organization. At the same time, they should be objective. So all their opinions, it should be based on facts. Uh, and they, what, what, what do they do? They do assurance and consulting activities. So first thing, they do assurance. So they are trying to help the organization in making sure that the internal controls are working, making sure that the risk management processes are working. And at the same time, they do consulting activities to help the organization in improving their operation in achieving their, their goals with the minimum cost possible. So they are activity designed to add value and improve an organization's operations. We say it helps an organization accomplish its objectives by bringing a systematic disciplined approach to evaluate and improve the effectiveness of risk management, control, and governance. So as you can see, internal auditors, they play a really important role in any organization. Now, if we go and go over the uh, definitions of risk management, because as we say here, we cover what? The internal auditors, they help the organization in improving and evaluating. See two things, improving and evaluating the effectiveness of risk management, control, and governance. So let's go first and go over risk management. What is the definition of risk management? We can say it's a process to identify, assess, manage, and control potential, uh, potential events or situations to provide reasonable assurance regarding the achievement of the organization objectives. So see, it's the process for you to identify, identify what risk. So in that way, we need to identify any potential events that will harm the organization, any risks there. Second, we need to assess, we need to say, okay, we have this risk, how can we really control this risk? How can we really uh, uh, you know, figure out how much the impact of this risk? And after that, we need to manage it, we need to reduce it, and then we need to control, make sure that we, have, we, we are always in control to, to bring the risk to the acceptable level in, inside the organization. And what we are saying here, it's the process of providing reasonable assurance. What's the meaning of reasonable assurance? For assurance, we have two things. We have absolute assurance and reasonable assurance. Reasonable assurance, we are saying risk management is not going to eliminate risk. It's not going to say that risk will not happen, but it's going to just try to reduce risk and say that we are doing our best to make sure that this potential event that will harm the organization and not allow it to achieve its objective is not going to happen. So we are providing reasonable assurance. Now, who's responsible for doing risk management? Well, we say it's the responsibility of the senior management. So the senior management, they are responsible for saying, okay, we need to have risk management processes in the organization. Now, who should implement this? Well, the operation management. The management in the organization should go and say, okay, the responsibility is uh, on the senior management. Now the senior management told us we need to implement this. Now we are responsible for doing the implementation for this risk management. And after that, the internal audit activity will come and evaluate and see, are these risk management processes are working? Are we keeping our risk to the acceptable level inside the organization? 
and we communicate this information to the board and audit committee so they oversight everything so in that way they make sure that the risk management is working make sure that the, the senior management are taking the responsibility making sure that the uh, uh, operation management are following up so they are just like you know monitoring everything now if we move to control what is control so control we say it's an action taken by management the board and other parties to manage risk so uh, to manage risk, so what we are saying here, we are trying to manage risk and increase the likelihood that established objectives and goals will be achieved. So here, see, so the first thing, control, it's one way for our, us to be able to manage risk, to be able to reduce risk to the acceptable level, and at the same time, increase the likelihood that we will be able to achieve our goals and objectives, will be achieved. So this is the first thing. And what we are saying here, management plans, or, or organizes uh, the, uh, and directs the performance of sufficient actions to provide reasonable assurance that objectives and goals will be achieved. So we are saying, see, one way, if you remember, the first thing for us to do control, we need to have plans. So in that way, if we have management plans, it will organize and direct the performance and tell employees what are we expecting from them. So in that way, that will help us in achieving our goals. So this is one way of doing this. At the same time, controls in general, and we will go next time over internal controls. Internal controls will help the organization in doing two things. And this is our main focus, two things. First, preventive control. So as you can see here in the first picture, for me, I want to have preventive control. So I want to give, for example, all the employees an employee card so they can't access the organization without using this employee card. And that way I prevent any one from entering the organization without authorization see this is a control i don't want someone to go enter the organization maybe steal something and leave without me knowing that so i want to control my organization i will do something called preventive control by preventive control i prevent someone from doing an action by having a control in place or i can do the other one see where i have the dollar here and i have the trap the meaning of it that I do deductive control. If someone will go and take this uh, uh, money, if someone would, is trying to steal, I will be able to catch this guy. So in that way, that's, that's deductive control. I will be able to deduct anything ha bad happened. And in that way, I will be able to, to uh, take corrective action and figure out why this is happening in the organization. This is the main thing. So of course, we have so many kind of control we have like uh, control that we will uh, place after the, the action will happen. We have so many, for example, IT and um, any like fin and other financial controls. But here we are just speaking in general about the definition of control. It's a, uh, for us to manage risk and uh, increase the likelihood that we'll achieve our goals. So now we speak about governance, which is the uh, the last thing. We said internal auditor, they are responsible for evaluating and improving risk management, control, and governance. What is governance? We say it's the combination of processes and structure implemented by the board to inform, direct, manage, and monitor the activities of organization toward achievement of its objectives. So see, the main idea here, the main focus for us, that we would like to have some processes and structures to improve the uh, uh, implemented by the board to what? To inform, direct, manage, monitor the activities toward achieving the goals. So it's just a structure in the organization. It's like a, a process in the organization that will make sure that the employees are doing all the activities that will allow them to achieve the objectives of the organization. And of course, we are going to go in, in, in the coming lectures in detail and understand what is governance, how to implement it, how to monitor it. But in general, it's just like uh, it should be implemented by the board, it should, uh, senior management, they should create this uh, uh, governance and at the same time they should direct all these processes to inform, direct and manage and monitor the activity toward achieving the goals. Now we go over the type of audits. What type of audits do we do as internal auditors? Well, we have something called financial audits. So for financial audits, they are just, we are going to audit the financial statements or we are going to audit a financial uh, 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 do you know like uh, activity inside the organization to make sure that all the financial numbers all the documentation all the processes are following the financial rules and regulations so in that way uh, or they are following the accounting guidelines or they are following whatever thing related to finance so we call it financial audits 
when we're speaking about compliance audit, we are trying to make sure that the, the organization, the department that we are auditing is following the rules and regulations outside the organization. So any rules and regulations related to envi being environmental friendly, not throwing stuff uh, out uh, uh, you know, to, to hurt the environment, making sure that you are not hiring employees based on uh, like, uh, you know, uh, gender. So in that way, we are trying always to focus on compliance, on making sure that you meet the rules and regulations outside the organization. At the same time, you are, you are following the procedures and policies inside the organization. So two things. For operational audit, here we are trying to make sure that the operation is based on the manual of the organization. So if we, I want to go and audit, for example, McDonald's, I want to make sure that the employees there are following all the instructions that we gave them that they should really uh, provide the meal in less than one minute, that they should uh, always smile when they are doing, when they are uh, working with the customer, they should always have the kitchen clean. So this is related to operation. I want to make sure that the operation is following whatever the organization said that uh, should happen. When we are doing IT audits, this is completely different things, but it's really interesting to do IT audits. So for IT audits, we are making sure that they are following or the IT system sometimes is following everything we said it should follow. So if we say this IT system, we will give them all the journal entries and after that will give me the balance sheet. I want to make sure that this accounting system is always recording all the entries. This accounting system is really working. This uh, IT system in general is following all everything that we said it should follow and at the same time, when I'm auditing this, I want to make sure that the internal controls are there. I want to make sure that Okay, uh, I, I looked at all the potential risks there, so in that way I would be able to assure the organization that this IT system that they have is working based on their requirements. Now, forensic audits, this is another thing, it's more related to a fraud. So if the organization is thinking that there is an activity there, there is a fraud inside the organization and they want to do audit, just to make sure that everything is fine, there is, there is no fraud there, or Maybe they are afraid that maybe there is a potential fraud, so I will do an audit to make sure that I will help the organization in understanding anything related to the fraud in the entity that I'm auditing. So now, for us as auditors, how should we do our work? Do you know what is expected from us inside the organization? Well, for us to understand this, we need to follow standards like any other like industry. So in that way, for us here, we have the Institute of Internal Auditors. They created something called the International Professional Practices Framework. And this is the latest edition, 2011. So for us, if we are going to do our work, we need to go and read this book for us to understand exactly what are the standards, what is expected from us, so in that way we'll be able to do our job easily and at the same time communicate to the board, communicate to the audit committee, to the management, that okay this is what we should do this is what is expected from us and this is what uh, you should uh, do what is what are your responsibilities and what are our responsibilities so let's go over them and get just a general idea so here we have something called uh, authoritative guidelines so in that way this is the guy uh, these are the guidelines that we need to follow when we are doing our audit now we have two things we have mandatory guidance and we have strongly recommended guidance Mandatory guidance, we should always follow this guidance when we are doing our work. Strongly recommended guidance, we should uh, uh, do it, but it's just, uh, we recommend that you do it when you are following anything. We are going to go over them uh, quickly. If you need more details about this, you can watch the uh, uh, other session that I did last week. So here we are saying mandatory guidance, it's about the definition. So we need to define exactly everything related to the inter internal audit activity, the internal audit, uh, the internal auditing in general, risk management, control. What are all these terms? What is the meaning of chief audit executive? So in that way, we need to understand all these definitions. After, we need to look at the international standards. So what are the standards that we should have for us to be able to do our job inside the organization? Code of ethics. What code of ethics we should follow when we are doing our job? So this is the mandatory guidance. This is what you should follow when you are doing your job. Now we have something called position papers, practice advisories, and practice guides, which is strongly recommended. Actually, what they do, they just help you in understanding how to conduct certain audits. So let's say if you are doing an audit for small business, 
how should you conduct it what standards should you follow what performance are we expecting from you so this is just a way for you to understand how to conduct uh, certain audits for in certain location industries or uh, organizations now if we go over the standards so we were speaking about definitions and we were speaking about standards and we are speaking about code of ethics definitions we are covering them right we already covered internal audit governance uh, uh, risk management control so we'll cover them one by one but now let's move on to the standards so for the standards we have attribute standards and we have performance standards attribute standards they focus on the attribute of the individual who's working in the internal audit and the organization to make sure that you have the appropriate attribute to conduct the internal audit for performance standards we are trying to understand what is expected from you and based on that evaluate you later if you are performing up to the standards related to what to doing internal audit work so first we start with attribute standards we have four standards that we need to look at we, we have purpose authority and responsibility we have independence and objectivity we have proficiency and do professional care and at the same time quality assurance and improvement program so you'll be like okay I need to know more about them. I'm like, perfect. So let's start uh, with the first one. So purpose, authority, and responsibility. So we are saying each organization should have something called audit charter, which is a, a written document inside the organization documenting everything related to the internal audit. So we say the audit charter, the audit charter defines the internal audit activities, purpose, authority, and responsibility, nature of uh, chief audit executives functional reporting relationship with the board the scope of the internal audit activities so see so charter is a really good uh, uh, document in the organization because it will define to everyone to the senior management to the, to the operation management what are we really doing in the organization what are, what is our uh, purpose what authorities we have what are our responsibilities and at the same time it will define the nature of reporting between the chief audit executives and the board which is functional reporting so they directly report to the board and at the same time they, they will define the scope okay can we audit the whole organization or just maybe uh, like uh, the division in US or the division in Australia so it's, it's really important for us to understand which division we are auditing now if we go and say for the audit charter we say authorizes access to records personnel and physical properties right so in that way it, it will do uh, it will allow us to have access if i go to the manager and they say please give me a list of your employees and their salaries he, he may say oh no i'm not going to give you this so the charter will allow us to go and tell this manager, manager that okay look we have the authority to access their records and you should give it to us which is really important when you are doing your internal audit now we say for the charter it should be reviewed by the chief audit executive presented to the senior management and approved by the board this is the main thing that you should always remember okay now we are saying recognition of definition of internal auditing the code of ethics and the standards in the internal audit charter we say the mandatory nature of the definition of internal auditing the code of ethics and the standards must be recognized in the internal audit charter the chief audit executive should discuss the definition of the internal uh, auditing the code of ethics and the standards with the senior management and the board so what are we saying here we are saying that when you are going to create a charter we need to make sure that what this charter is following everything related to the definition of internal auditing and at the same time what we are following the standards and we are following the uh, like uh, code of ethics and we should communicate this to who we should communicate this to the audit committee we should communicate this to the senior management we should communicate this to the board so they understand when we are creating this charter and we are when we are entering all the information we are making sure that what this information are following the standards and we are justifying okay we are requesting an access to this information 
because based on the standards we should have access to them not because we decided that we are going to we would like to get access to this information so this is important now next next section we will speak about independence and objectivity we are saying the internal audit activity must be independent and internal auditors must be objective in performing their work so two things so we are saying the organizational independence the chief audit executive must report must report what must report to a level within the organization that allows the internal audit activity to fulfill its responsibility so see so this is the meaning of independence in the organization that the chief audit executive must be able to report to a level in the organization where they will feel like they can do their responsibility and they are independent so what we are saying, the chief audit executive must confirm to the board at least annually that the organization is independent of internal audit activity. So in that way, I should always speak with the board and make sure that I'm telling the board that I am working inside the organization in a way that I am independent when I'm doing my work. If I am not independent, in that case, I need to let the board know at least annually. So what we are saying here, direct interaction with the board. What is the direct interaction between the auditors and the board. We are saying the chief audit executive must communicate and interact directly with the board. So they should have direct communication. Now we are speaking about the individual objectivity. So first we are speaking about the objectivity, uh, independence, now uh, uh, objectivity. We are saying the internal auditors must have, uh, must, must have an uh, impartial, unbiased attitude and avoid any conflict of interest. So you should be objective. So if you are going to audit a department and you discover that, okay, uh, this guy who is auditing this department decided to go and invite you for uh, like a dinner. And after that, he brought you with him home to play some games. Uh, like, uh, uh, do you know, you are afraid that this is going to affect your objectivity because next day when you are going to do and do the audit for his department, you may not like to, you know, look at everything you may say okay for this it's not that minor i'm just not going to have it in the audit report so you should always avoid any conflict of interest when you are doing audits and at the same time do all your work based on facts not based on just like you know uh, emotional uh, effect that you have during the audit so we are saying impairment to in in independence or objectivity we are saying if in the, uh, independence or objectivity is impaired what, what do we mean by impaired that it's not, uh, you are not independent anymore. You are not objective anymore. In fact or appearance. Okay, you say, what, what do you mean by in fact or appearance? So in appearance, you are not independent. Do you know it's easy? In appearance, um, no, let's go first with fact, in fact. So in fact, that you are not independent. If Okay, if you are going to audit this guy and this guy, he's your father. So in fact, you are not uh, independent, right? Because he's your, your father. So you... You are going to go and uh, audit him and it appears like you are not independent. Or if you are going to audit a friend or if you are going to audit a person and this person or this department is really helping you in, uh, let's say, getting uh, like benefits for your children in, in, uh, in their school. So, so you need to make sure that when you are doing this, you are independent and objective in fact and at the same time in appearance. So the meaning of it that may you, you may go and audit an organization. But people in the organization, employees, the whole organization will think that you are independent. So wh wh why? Because they think, okay, let's say, for example, this guy that you are auditing him, his last name is the same as your last name, but there is no relation between you and him. So in that way, they think in appearance that you know this guy, that what you are going to do is, is not uh, objective. So in that way, they will not trust your opinion. So you need to make sure that if you have you are uh, not independent or objective in fact or appearance you should just do what we are saying uh, details of the uh, environment must be disclosed to the appropriate part so you should go and tell the management that you are not independent or objective and tell them the reasons so we are saying the nature of the disclosure will depend upon the environment so you should really disclose it and tell them why you are not now we go to proficiency and do professional care. So we are saying proficiency is the internal auditors must possess the knowledge, skills, and other competencies needed to perform their individual responsibilities. So as internal auditors, 
on individual basis, see, you should have the knowledge, skills, and competencies to perform your work. Now we are saying the internal audit activity collectively must possess or obtain the knowledge, skills, and other competencies needed to perform its responsibility. So see, you as an internal auditor, you should have the knowledge to do your work. Now the whole internal audit department should have all the knowledge needed to do what? Maybe IT, maybe IT audit, maybe financial audit, operational audit, compliance audit, but not each individual auditor. Now we speak about do professional care. So we are saying internal auditors must apply the care and skill expected of reasonably uh, burdened and competent internal audit. Do professional care does not imply infidelity. So what we are saying here, you should as an internal auditor go and do your job to the best and do and use all the knowledge that you have, all the experience that you have when you are doing your job. But the meaning of, of it that you are not doing perfect job see you are doing your best you are doing great job so in that way if anything happened or you miss something or you overcome something or you didn't notice a mistake that's fine as long as you are doing your best so what we are saying we can't guarantee to the organization when an internal auditor is going to do the job that he will be able to catch everything or he will not make mistakes now we are saying continuing professional development we are saying the internal auditors must enhance their knowledge, skills, and other competencies through continuing professional development. Like any other profession, you should always continue uh, and learn more about your uh, field, know more about the profession, and at the same time, uh, develop yourself in general. Now we move to the Quality Assurance and Improvement Program. We are saying the Chief Audit Executive must develop and maintain a Quality Assurance and Im Improvement Program that covers all aspects of the internal audit activity. So see, develop and maintain quality assurance and improvement program to cover all aspects of internal audit activity. Okay, what are we doing here? We are as auditors, if we are going to go and audit other organizations, we need to make sure that we have quality assurance to make sure that our work is perfect, is following the standards, right? So in that way, we need to make sure that we go and evaluate our work as internal auditors and make sure that we are following the standards. In the same way, we go and audit other, uh, uh, do an audit to another department to make sure they are following whatever they should follow. So we are saying requirements of quality assurance and improvement program. The quality assurance and improvement program must include both internal and external assessment. So let's go over them. So internal assessments, ongoing monitoring of the performance of the internal audit activity. So see, internal assessment is, is how are we going to go and assess our department, ourselves, and external assessment is who, we, who is going to come from outside the organization to assess our performance. So ongoing monitoring of the performance, so in that way the chief audit executive, he should make sure that uh, like all the internal auditors are doing their job, periodic review. Uh, uh, reviews performed through self-assessment or by other person within the organization with a sufficient knowledge of internal audit practice. So maybe someone in the organization who is expert in inter internal audit, uh, auditing, who is a CIA, he will come and just do self-assessment for the organization, help us in, in doing self-assessment or do the self uh, do the assessment himself. So in that way, he will go and review our work, make sure that when we are doing our audit work. We are independent, we are objective, we are following the IIA standards, we are uh, really complying with the code of ethics. So this is really important inside the organization to, to create something like self-assessment. So we make sure by the end of the year that we are following the IIA standards. Now we, at the same time, at least once every five years, we need to do something called external assessment which is that the chief audit executive will discuss with the board the need for more frequent external assessment if needed, but usually we do it every five years, we do it once. And this assessment will do what? Will be done by qualified external, by qualified external reviewer or review team, including any potential conflict of interest. So what we are doing here, we are trying always to make sure that we need to get an external uh, auditor or external uh, we say reviewer or review team who will come to our organization and make sure that we are following the standards or let us know if we are doing anything wrong so in that way we can correct it in the future we can improve our work in the future if needed 
So, uh, reporting on quality and assurance improvement program. We are saying the chief audit uh, executive must communicate must communicate what the results to the senior management and the board so in that case we are saying okay we are doing this quality assurance and we we came up with the results and this result may say that okay we are following the standards or we are not following the standards so what what are we going to do in this case we are saying the use of conformance with the international standards for the professional uh, practice of internal auditing. So we are saying, now when we are communicating this result to the board, we have two options. The first one, we can say, yes, we are oh, oh, we conform with the international standards of profession, professional practice of internal auditing, and we can only use this if we can support it, if we can say, okay, the external auditors, they say, yes, we, we do it. Or the external like assessment said yes, or our self-assessment said yes. Disclosure of non-conformance, we say the chief audit executive must disclose the non-conformance and impact to the senior management and the board. So in that way, if the report will come and say, okay, look, you are not following the, the IA standards, you are not complying uh, with the code of ethics, we should report it to the uh, board and senior management. Now we move on to the performance standards. So for the performance standards, we are saying, what Perform, performance are we expecting from the internal auditors? What are they going to do in their organization? So we say first, managing the internal audit activity. We say the chief audit executive should effectively manage the internal audit activity to ensure it add, adds value to the organization, number one. So we are managing the internal audit activity. Number two, the nature of work. We are saying the internal audit activity should evaluate and contribute to the improvement. See here we are speaking about the improvement of risk management control governance processes using systematic and disciplined approach. Now, engagement planning. We are saying the internal auditors should develop, record a plan for each engagement, including the scope, objectives, timing, and resource uh, and resource allocations. So in that way, they should really create a plan for anything that they are going to do. Say, okay, what is the scope? How many departments are we going to audit? What is our objective? Is it financial, compliance, operational? What is the timing? Is it going to be one month, one week? And how many resources do we need? How many auditors do we need? Any special assistance from the department itself? Performing the engagement, we are saying the internal auditors should identify, analyze, and evaluate, and record sufficient information to achieve the objectives. So see, when we are doing the audit, when we are performing the engagement, we should record everything. If we see someone doing something wrong, we should record it. If we see that they are following the standards, we should record it. Why? Because we are trying to collect evidence for us to support our opinion at the end and in general achieve our engagement objectives. So communicating results, we are saying the internal auditor should communicate the engagement results, which is obvious, right? We do the engagement, we finish, we communicate the results. The communication should include the engagement's objectives and scope as well uh, appropriate conclusions, recommendations, and action plans. So in that way, when we are communicating, we should really communicate, okay, what we did, uh, communicate to them what is expected from us, and at the same time, what the conclusion and recommendation that we have, and the action plans for any corrective action. Monitoring. Now, it's not enough just to communicate and leave the organization. We are saying the chief audit executive should establish and maintain a system to monitor the distribution uh, of results communicated to the management. So if we have uh, any disposition, so if we say, okay, this is what we think, and this is what's happening, and now you need to take a corrective action, we need, we need to really monitor this. We need to have a system where we are monitoring this to make sure that the department is taking corrective action to prevent this issue in the future. Resolution of management acceptance of risk. So here we are saying when a chief audit executive believes that senior management has accepted a level of residual risk that may be unacceptable in the organization, he or she should discuss the matter with the senior management if the decision regarding residual risk is not resolved, the chief audit executive and senior management should report the matter to the board for resolution. So what we are saying here, we go and we speak with the senior management. We say, okay, look, you are 
taking action that's gonna cause risk to the organization. Why? Because you are not disposing from this chemical materials in the right way. He will say, no, I don't agree with you. This is not a risk for our organization. So what's gonna happen? You are gonna go and speak with the senior management and say, okay, this is the issue. And in that way, if the senior management will say, okay, we, were, we don't even like really care about it, in that way, you should really report this issue to the board. And you need to say, okay, there is a big issue, it's causing risk to the organization, it's not acceptable, we should discuss this. So this is related to the standards, related to the attribute and performance standards. Now we go over the code of ethics. So here, when you are doing your internal audit work, you should have, you should comply with these following uh, code of ethics, related to integrity, objectivity, uh, and at the same time, confidentiality and competency. So here, you should be, uh, you should be uh, like uh, following all these standards, uh, all these code of ethics, so you should be uh, uh, objective when you are providing your opinion, let's say. You should have all the knowledge that you need. So let's go over them one by one. Integrity, we are saying sh the internal auditor shall perform. See, they love to use here the word shall, but the uh, internal auditors shall perform their work with honesty, uh, diligence and responsibility. So here they are saying you should do your work in an honest way. And of course you are an internal auditor. This is what, what we are expected from, what we are expecting from you. So we are saying the internal auditors shall observe the law and make disclosure expected by the law and the profession. So that way you should, uh, you, should, uh, you should understand, okay, what is the law? And at the same time, you should make sure that all the disclosures that you have following that. So you don't go and go and audit some, um, someone and after that, go to another department and tell him, okay, look what the other person done. You don't disclose this information. You need to be careful when you are doing your work for you to be uh, to not like do anything against the law. Shall not uh, knowingly be a party to any illegal activity or engage in, in acts that are uh, discreditable to the profession of internal auditing or the organization. So think about it. If you are working in your organization and if you are in the internal auditing department and if you decided once that you are going to go and buy from let's say the retail division and the guy he said okay look this item is not on discount but I'm going to give it to you on, on discount and you don't really audit their department so he said okay you don't audit our department or maybe you audit our department overcome this issue see this is not uh, this is not good things for, for you to do so, so for that, you need to make sure when you are working inside your organization or outside your organization, in the profession itself, you, you, not, you are not party of any illegal act. Even if you are outside your organization, believe it or not, if any internal auditor who is working in their organization is stealing or doing any illegal act in any uh, like other organizations or in, in his personal life in general, he is not in compliance with our code of ethics which is like the IIA code of ethics anymore so in that case he will not be able to perform his job in the organization and at the same time we are saying internal auditors shall respect and contribute to the legitimate and ethical uh, objectives of the organization so now we are speaking about objectivity so we are saying internal auditors shall not participate in any activity or relationship that may impair or be uh, presumed to, to impair their unbiased uh, assessment. So in that way, see, you should always be objective and not be uh, like part of any activity that will make you not objective. We are saying this participation includes uh, those activities of relationship that may be conflict with interest. We are saying internal auditors shall not accept anything that may impair or be presumed to Im uh, impair their professional judgment. At the same time, so you don't accept any gifts, uh, internal auditors shall disclose all material facts known to them that if not disclosed may uh, uh, distort the reporting of activities under review. So if you have something and you need to disclose, if you have inform material information you need to, to, to say which is going to affect the, the organization, you should really be able to disclose it. If you can't disclose it or if you don't disclose it, that's also a, a big issue here. Okay, so I think we are in, in 10 minutes and we will finish this uh, session. So uh, here we are speaking, okay, what kind of information should you have private? 
So we are saying the internal auditor should be uh, should, should be a burden in the use of protected of information acquired by the course of duty. So don't go and go and audit an organization. Let's say you are auditing, for example, uh, Carrefour uh, supermarkets, and you discover that Carrefour supermarkets are doing something bad, for example. So you go and tell everyone, tell your friends, okay, do you know when you go and shop, uh, do shopping at Carrefour? Look, this is what they are doing and they are tricking you. So see, so don't, if you obtain any information from any organization, don't, do you not disclose it to anyone. Keep it private. It's confidential information. We are saying the internal auditor shall not use information for any person, personal gain or in any manner that would be contrary to the law or like, you know, the rules or ethical objectives in the organization. So here we are saying you, any personal information that you obtain, you can't really use. So think about it like this. You go and audit an organization before going uh, to the stock market and uh, going public. So what will happen? You go and audit this organization and say, okay, I'm going to go and buy some shares in this organization before it will go, you know, like uh, before the price will go up because I know some certain information based on my audit. So make sure that you don't use any information that you obtain for any personal gain. Finally, we say competency. We are saying the internal auditors shall engage only in those activities for which they have the necessary knowledge and skills and experience. Don't go and audit an IT department if you don't know how to conduct an IT audit. Don't go and audit small business if you don't understand the small business operation and you, you don't uh, know the rules and regulations for that in, in, like, uh, in a segment. So make sure that you have the knowledge, skills, and experience to perform your job. At the same time, we are saying internal auditors shall perform the internal audit services in accordance with the international standards for professional practice of internal auditing. So you are following the, uh, the, and the standards always when you are doing your work. So in that way, will help you understand what you need to do, what is expected from you. Internal auditors shall continually improve their proficiency and effectiveness and quality of their service. Like we said, you should always improve your work. So now this is the internal audit process in general. We are saying departments identify, uh, here we are saying in, in, in initial audit performed. So we go and perform the audit. How, how are we gonna do and perform the audit? Well, we say department and then, uh, identified for annual audit. So the organization will say, or the chief audit executive will meet with, with the management and say, okay, these departments, uh, maybe we think there's something wrong with them. They have some risk. We think that we didn't audit them for a long time. So let's go and audit them. Most likely we do something called risk plan audit. So risk base or risk uh, uh, or plan, uh, we call it a yeah, risk, risk based plan audit. What, what will happen there? We go and look at the organization and analyze it. Say, okay, where is the risk in the organization? Okay, how are we controlling this risk? Okay, based on that, we decide which departments are we going to go and audit. So we decide we are going to audit these five departments. So in that way, we do something called initial audit perform. So we go and do the audit for this department. Department respond to the audit. And after that, final audit report include the recommendations. So what will happen? We go do the audit for these departments, work with them, and after that, provide them with our final audit report, including everything that we, we done for all these departments. Final report reviewed by the audit and the finance committee. So in that way, the audit and finance committee, they review it, see, okay, if any corrective action need to be happening, uh, what's going on with these departments, and after that, follow up nine to 12 months after the final audit review. So, so this, this is the process for the internal audit and how we do it. Now, if you go in general and look at what is the role of internal auditors right now based on you know understanding that right now we are operating in enterprise risk management environment where internal auditors are not just going to do the audit to make sure that the organization is following their objectives but they are always helping the organization in doing risk management by evaluating the risk management process so this will really explain to you okay what is the role of internal auditors so let's start from the blue one so we are saying the core internal audit roles in uh, the organization related to enterprise risk management is giving assurance on the risk management process. So we are saying they go make tell us, okay, the risk management process are working and give, uh, give assurance that risks are uh, correctly evaluated. So we are saying 
they go to the organization and help the organization in making sure that they are really evaluating their risk in the correct way. Evaluate risk management processes. So we, they go and evaluate the risk management processes and see, okay, are they using the, the correct way for them to manage risk? Can they use another way? What, what are the best practices for them to be able to manage this risk? Evaluate the reporting of key risk. So in that way, they need to understand, okay, how the organization is really looking at the risk and how they are reporting this risk to the senior management. After that, we are saying reviewing the management of key risk. So now, see, we are not responsible for managing the risk as internal auditors. We are just reviewing the risk in the organization, reviewing the risk processes, and making the organization know that, okay, this is what are we, we are doing in the organization, and this is what we came up with. Now we give this information to the management, and they should really take the action. So here we are saying legitimate internal audit roles uh, with safeguards. So here we are saying, okay, what is our role here with, with safeguards? We are saying facilitating the identification and evaluation of risk. So here we are trying to help the organization in understanding how they can evaluate and identify risk. Coaching management in, in responding to risk. So we, in that way, we are training managers. We are telling them, this is, if you have risk, this is what you should do. We are uh, co cooperating uh, uh, with uh, enterprise risk management activities. So we are part of their risk management activity. If they have a meeting and they say, okay, we would like to uh, you know, understand the risk, identify it, manage it, we are part of this meeting just to help them. We are, uh, here it's hard to read, it's uh, consolidated reporting on risk. So in that way, we are trying always to help them in understanding how to report the risk in the organization and who they should report it to maintaining and developing enterprise risk management team. So here we are helping them, just helping them maintaining and developing the enterprise risk management framework. And at the same time, it's championing establishment. So we are just pushing, you know, and inspiring them to establish enterprise risk management processes inside the organization. And at the same time, developing risk management strategy for uh, uh, board approval. So in that way, once they finish this plan, we can say, okay, we can review it for you. We can make sure that it's following everything we discussed. So in that way, when you send it to the uh, board, we try also to speak with the board to approve it. Now, now we are saying roles internal auditors should not undertake. See, so here, here is the re like red mark. Don't do this if you are working as internal auditor. Don't set the risk appetite. So it's not your responsibility to decide what risk we are going to control over the organization or what is the like, you know, the level of risk that we are going to accept in the organization. You can just suggest, you can say, okay, this is what we think. And after that, the organization, based on their objectives, based on the cost and benefit, they decide, okay, what, what risk they are going to look at. Now we are saying here, um, in both risk management uh, processes, we are saying here, you, you don't tell management, this is the risk management process that you need to do, or this is uh, what you are going to do. You just suggest. Management assurance on risk. So in that way, you don't say, okay, I assure you that you will be able to control your risk. What you are saying, you are just evaluating the risk processes. You are not assuring them that this risk processes is going to eliminate risk. And at the same time, um, it's, uh, we are, I think, about like five minutes to finish. So and here we are saying, uh, taking decisions on risk responsibility so you don't take decisions you don't say okay i'm going to control this risk or that risk it's their responsibility it's for the management and at the same time implementing risk responses on management be management behalf like i said you don't go and implement risk management process you just go and suggest and you are not accountable for the risk management process management is they are responsible for it so this is the main idea that keep it in mind when you are doing this that's everything that I, uh, I uh, covered today for related to uh, internal auditing. So in general, just to summarize everything, we went over the internal, auditor, uh, internal auditing definition. We explained what is control, governance, risk management. We discussed the attribute and performance standards. We, we went over the code of ethics and we discussed the auditing uh, process or the internal uh, audit process. And we looked at the responsibility of the internal auditors. Please, if you have any questions,